From NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, this is the Flight Day 7 Stock Update Report. Activities associated with Sunday's spacewalk and the repair of the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph wound up testing both minds and muscles. Mission Operations Manager Keith Wally has provided a recap of Flight Day 7 shortly after he finished his shift. So today we had the fourth EVA and Hubble's personality is showing again. It just seems like it's mad at us because this is our last servicing mission, so it's starting to act up. So today we had two things on tap. We were going to repair this, this instrument, the Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, and then we we're going to put on this outer blanket layer to repair some of the outside damage. Well, it didn't go exactly as planned. The, this repair started off great. The crew got going on it right on time. And they started taking out all the different screws, including 120 captive screws they were going to have to take out. But while doing it, one handle that was in place, and it was in the way of the board that we were going to have to take off to get into the instrument, wouldn't come loose. Tried taking that screw off. The crew tried different methods. They changed the bits out, and it just wouldn't work. And we spent a long time wrestling with this. And when I say wrestling, literally wrestling with it, because finally the solution to get this off was that they had one screw they couldn't get out, so the crew was going to pry this bar off. And we tested it here at Goddard, actually. We had a spare, and we had a spare bar. And we had some people here at Goddard, and they put this bar, and they wrestled with it, and they pulled it off, and they saw how much force it could take. And then they had the crew do that also, and they told them you could do it. The crew did it fantastically. Mike Massimino got it, and he wrestled it off, and the rest of the repair went on. We lost a lot of time. We lost about an hour and a half doing that. But it all got done, it all got accomplished, and I'm really happy to say that we now have the STIS instrument working again. We did our aliveness test, and it's working perfectly. So here, just like last night with ACS, another instrument that was not working has now been repaired again. It was a tough day, because when you're seeing this, you're hoping everything gets done, everything gets accomplished, and one of the results of that not happening was the fact that now this outer blanket layer won't get done till tomorrow, but in the big scheme of things, we have this incredible multi-hundred million dollar instrument working again. So 99% success, a little bit we'll have to defer till tomorrow. But overall, fantastic day. So tomorrow is our final spacewalk day and it's the final chance we're gonna to get to work on Hubble. And we have two things, actually three or four things planned. The first big task that we have for the day is our batteries. We have six batteries on board Hubble. We, earlier in the mission, we changed out three of them and they're working fantastically. But we have three more of those old 1990 batteries on board. So we need to change those out. And we expect it to go just as smoothly as it did the first day. After we get the batteries changed out, we'll have a whole complement, new complement of batteries will be set for many years to go. The other task is the fine guidance sensor. Now these fine guidance sensors, they give us that very accurate pointing accuracy. In fact, it's so accurate, if you could take a picture of a dime on top of the Empire State Building from Washington, D.C., it's incredible, the accuracy. And this is one of those instruments that gives us that capability. It weighs about 900 pounds. It's not small. It's pretty big, the size of a grand piano. So that's going to happen tomorrow. And then after that, these outer blanket layers, the outer layers that we have on the telescope of Kapton and Teflon, they've been peeling away over the years. In fact, you can see them just popping up. We changed out four of them in the past on our critical electronic phase. We want to get two more of them tomorrow, and then we'll be set for the long term. So it's still a full day. We have a lot to do, but we think we can still get it done. So the STIS instrument was one of those roller coasters, just like the other day, like we had with Wide Field, like we had with the gyros. It was really painful to watch, to see Mass struggling with that, trying to get it done. And he just wanted to help him, but there's so much we could do from our side. And he did it. He came through and he got it done. And that's one of the feelings we have in the stock where no matter how bad it is, we always believe that these guys are going to get it done. And they do. They've done it every single time. And then when we had that aliveness test, it was just that euphoric feeling again, just like we had last night with ACS. An instrument that's been dead for a while, it's working again and it's going to do super science again in the future. The fifth and final spacewalk of STS-125 will focus on a trio of activities associated with extended Hubble's operating life. As Keith mentioned, first up for astronauts John Grunsfeld and Drew Feustel will be installing the second battery module unit, or BMU. Each battery module unit contains three batteries. The first BMU was installed during the second spacewalk. Hubble has operated on its original batteries since deployment from the space shuttle in 1990. The next task for the astronauts will be installing the large Fine Guidance Sensor, or FGS. The FGS is an optical sensor that will be used on the Hubble 
to provide pointing information for the spacecraft. We're going to put in a new fine guidance sensor uh, to take the place of one that has shown evidence of, of uh, failing and not, not being long for this world. Well, the fine guidance sensors actually are the components that find the particular observation. And they pick two guide stars very close to what is being observed. And the fine guidance sensors then zero in on those guide stars. They lock in on them and now you know you're pointing in the right place in the sky. And then it transfers over to the rate sensor units, the gyroscopes, to hold steady on that object. The final task for Grunsfeld and Feustel will be to install new thermal material known as new outer blanket layers or nobles. We're going to install a new outer blanket layer called a noble which is a solid, it's not a uh, blanket anymore, it's a solid uh, sheet. We designed a new outer blanket layer that can either lay on top of the degraded blankets, just cover them up, or we will take off the blanket in order to install a new radiator against the bay door. And this is a very um, weather resistant new outer blanket layer that we have designed, so it should not degrade appreciably for the next 15, 20 years. So at the end of this servicing mission, where we've installed new cameras and upgraded all of this infrastructure, uh, the whole point of this is that the Hubble Space Telescope will be better than it's ever been in its history and will continue to produce this, this breathtaking and amazing science well into the next decade. With over 30 hours of spacewalking time now in the record books, Atlantis' crew is in the home stretch with one more EVA tomorrow and then deployment of Hubble on Tuesday. We will now return to Mission Control in Houston for continuing NASA television coverage of the flight of Atlantis on STS-125. Up next on NASA TV will be the first airing of the Flight Day 7 Highlights Package. <laughs>